Alright, hey guys, what's up? It's your boy Cluelesswell, and today, well, I'm going to talk about Rogue One. Uh, I figured I'd actually use a Star Wars game, so I had to dig through the trash and I found Star Wars Battlefront on the bottom. Uh, you know, not a, not a bad game, but it's pretty bad. Anyways, uh, went ahead and did some Death Trooper gameplay. Uh, so I, it's actually in the, <laughs> if you look at that right there, I didn't even know what it was. Um, so what had happened was I wanted to get something, you know, from Rogue One. So I went, found a guy to play Krennic, and now I'm a Death Trooper. Uh, talking about the movie itself, of course, these are going to be spoilers ahead. I'm going to talk a little bit about the plot, just my overall opinion of it. Uh, this is obviously an opinion piece, so you know you could have a different opinion. That's what you're entitled to. This is my two cents, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started now. So uh, I thought the movie was very good. I think that, you know, as a Star Wars fan, it was a good movie. Um, when you compare it to something like The Force Awakens, which is, in my opinion, after watching it a few more times, a garbage movie, uh, I would definitely say Episode Seven so far the weakest, or second weakest behind The Phantom Menace. Um, regardless, though, when I think about the movie, when I was watching Rogue One, um, I thought they did a great job of kind of tying in a bunch of things, uh, putting characters that didn't really have too much of a backstory, and they put them into Rogue One to kind of just, like, for the fan nods and stuff like that. Uh, for example, the duo from the cantina scene in uh, episode 4, they make a brief appearance on Jedha. Um, and then uh, some other stuff, like just kind of like, you know, giving a little nod to the uh, original trilogy. Um, I thought they did with uh, Grand Moff Tarkin, uh, and his actor was Peter Cummings. What they did is they CGI'd Peter Cummings back to life, pretty much. Uh, it was really, I didn't really know what to think. I was in kind of like a shock mode, because it's like, this actor is clearly not alive anymore but there he is right there so it's kind of like a moral issue of like is that totally okay to be doing that uh, here I didn't know I had a thermal imploder and somehow I died I don't know how that happened I was really disappointed I was having a ton of fun with the death trooper so I don't know why I did that but oh well anyways yeah going back to the movie um, I thought it was very good I thought what they did with Darth Vader they put him in there he had some great the time he was on screen was very demanding it's very demanding presence you clearly knew he was not, not to be trifled with <laughs> to say the least uh, so that was just great to see and oh my goodness that ending the real ending where where vader gets to get on the ship and he boards it and he just destroys rebels i mean that's something people have waited decades to see it's just darth vader swoosh swoosh choke slam choke choke stab stab uh, just, just absolutely crazy. So, that was probably the greatest thing I've I've seen in Star Wars ever. Uh, probably better than, I mean, I would say even though it's very short, I would say it's probably one of the strongest scenes we've seen of a character in a long time. Uh, I would say in terms of like defining the character, ten out of ten. Uh, obviously not the best scene in Star Wars. I think the best scene in Star Wars is probably the the duel between Obi Wan and Anakin on Episode Three. Uh, it's just, it establishes basically the rest of the trilogy and uh, what's happening and how that one duel leads to define the entire galaxy. So I think that's really unique. And so obviously it's hard to take away from a scene like that because although the, the Vader scene is incredibly powerful, it really does demonstrate the uh, how the guy, even with all the problems he faced and not having any real limbs except for half an arm, is still you know of more than a force to be reckoned with. Now on the flip side of this, I thought it was very cool what they did with uh, Vader on his Mustafar castle. So what they did is they put him in his back to tank, and that's kind of like a, you know the healing thing of Star Wars. And he's in there, and you get to see just for a glimpse the broken, absolutely mundane man that was Darth Vader outside the suit. He has basically nothing, no arms, no legs, uh, just basically a, a body, like a, a chest body, I don't know what else to say. Um, so I think that was great to expose, you know, the man behind the suit, the chosen one. And it shows, you know, even though he was so, you know, badly damaged, he was still the chosen one and still had an, enough connection to the Force. So pretty cool. I went and saw it with my friends, so I was having to explain, like, oh, this is that, and yeah, the Force is pretty much a plot device that's really only good, like, for the plot. Doesn't really do much else. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was it was a really good movie. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think that Disney, pr 
probably should make sure that their writers and other people don't, uh, what would be the term, don't say anything political. I think it was Whites or Chris Whites or something that said something about the Empire being an evil white supremacist organization and then he has a, he has a safety pin logo. Like, just Disney, make sure no one says anything about politics, especially not about Star Wars, a franchise that, you know, is probably the biggest in the world. So, I mean, getting that into politics, not a good idea. I think the base principle that the Empire is basically Nazis in space is good enough. That, that's about as political as you need to go in terms of real life. Um, and then just thinking about everything else, uh, everything else was just really good. I think the movie will stand the test of time. Obviously, the ending was a little lackluster, I thought. Like, I know they didn't have to die. I didn't think they should have died. Um, just some stuff like that. Anyways, though, I hope you guys have enjoyed this little opinion piece. I hope, and I encourage you all to go watch the movie. Uh, it's definitely, you know, a great movie. Um, the only thing I would take away is that um, Disney's going to be doing this, you know, every year. I think that may or may not start getting at fans because Star Wars is something that's, you know, it came out every four years and then there was a gigantic break between them and the prequels, the original trilogy and prequels. So if you start pumping out the movies, you might start losing fans over time because, I mean, if you oversaturate the market, then you destroy it. Anyways, though, guys, uh, like I was saying, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I will talk to you all later. Uh, if you guys could leave a like, comment, and if you liked the uh, video, want to see more film review kind of things, uh, just leave a comment. It makes my day. And uh, hopefully the new microphone doesn't sound too bad. I, I wanted to get something a little smaller. This is like a, I think this is the V-Moda Pro Boom Mic. You just plug it into your headphones. Excellent choice if somebody's looking for a cheap uh, microphone. And uh, yeah, with that said, as I get killed by Luke, hope you all enjoyed. Adios.